the obvious, the well-known names we're trying to leave, but this is a snapshot of some of the names that people have been texting through. So just jump in if you know these boys and where they're from and who might be looking at them. Mitch Nevitt. Yeah, taller midfielder, Geelong Falcons. We won't see Geelong have a stack of picks in the 20s, so mm. maybe they can have a look at him. Jake Saligo. Smaller midfielder. He's a little bit like Trent Bianco, I think, from the Eastern Rangers. I reckon he gets picked in the second round, though. Josh Ward. I like him. Classy midfielder, inside, outside, nice balance. I reckon he's right in Hawthorne's mix for that pick five. Ooh. For their first pick? Yes. Ooh. Wow. Uh, Blake Howes? Yeah, he's a wingman from the San Diego Dragons. Tall, he, isn't he? 190 centimetres, uh, pretty athletic. Uh, he's somewhere around the 30 mark for me. Josh Wrench? Monkey Wrench? Yeah, well, he's a uh, monkey <laughs> wrench. Monkey. Uh, <laughs> food, food Fighters song. Uh, he, so they got, I tell you, they got more than just footy wisp. They got a little bit of breakfast well, about them. You got to have a little bit more than the footy, Gary, <laughs> as you well know. I've said to you many times. <laughs> He's a big key forward, strapping lad from uh, the Ballarat uh, region, and kicks it a mile. He reminds me a little bit of um, Jacob Kaziski. Bit of that, a bit of uh, Tim Membry. Like he just oh, yeah. gets the ball. and Clunks it and kicks goals. Won the medal, didn't he? He the won the, medal. the Morris medal. Did he? Uh, yeah. The monkey wrench. Yep. So he's uh, a, a, it's probably a second half of the draft prospect. There. I call him Monk. <laughs> Judson Clark. Yeah, we spoke about him yeah, before. That was, he's he's that oh, left footer. Um, yeah, classy play, finisher. Uh, that's the finish. It just a, when he gets the ball inside fifty, he's going to kick it. Can't have enough good kickers in your team. Paul, uh, Paul Curtis. Big fan of Paul Curtis. Now, he's, he's a little bit of a wild card for me. Right. We talk about that game that Judson Clark played uh, mid-year. Well, Curtis that day kicked four as well and was outstanding as a sort of nifty small forward. Just takes his opportunity. So one to keep an eye on there from the Western Jets. Uh, do, if if Luke Darcy's boy Sam mm. wasn't going father's son, where would you have him? It, he would. I think the Giants would probably take him at pick two, wow. given their list. Demographic and their key forwards, they don't have that many now. They've they've moved out. Finlayson, and Jeremy Cameron goes. He's he's the best key forward in it. So I've he's read, Max, Max King of this year's draft. Okay, I've heard mate, potentially ruck. He's not he's not a ruckman though, is he? He hasn't rucked much. No. Center, center, center forward, center back. He's he played back, hasn't he? He's two hundred and four centimeters, so he has to be athletic. Able to ruck. Yeah, and I watched him play a fair bit for Scotch this year before the season got cut short, obviously, and. He was doing some crazy stuff. Was we're he? hearing we're hearing the old man might be a bit of a problem here, yeah. though. <laughs> we want to we want to interview him, but there seems to be some sort of a price being put on him by <laughs> maybe his dad. So we have to chat. What about draftees and dads that have the same haircut? Yes, so they've both that, got the mullet. Going that is that is a very interesting pickup. <laughs> that is a very interesting and pickup. Joby Obi Wan Kenobi <laughs> and the Wisp. Don't worry about that. Um, Arthur Jones, who's the nephew of the Cracker Brothers. Yeah, and he come on the same late. It was the grand final day. I don't know if you were there early enough to watch the the, the, the curtain early, raiser. Early enough. He had a couple of appointments. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he was doing some gigs for shoots at that stage of the day. Don't worry about that. He didn't leave off the stadium from about Thursday onwards, I think. Uh, look, he, he was part of that uh, curtain raise, and he was outstanding mm. as a small forward, so he's shot onto the scene very late. Ben de Bolfo, is that any, men, that's any relation to Tony? Nephew, I believe. Is it? Yeah. All the blues, are they having a sniff or not? <laughs> they should be. He'd be in the year, wouldn't he? <laughs> uh, the historian there. Look, he's a, a key back, pretty versatile and, and a hard at it player. Yusuf Dib, our last one. And as I apologise, there's about a thousand that have come through, but Yusuf Dib, Collingwood Academy player. I like him. He's smaller type, but gets on the, gets around the ground well. Still a bit of a question mark as to whether the Pies will commit to him at the moment. They haven't. Still working through that, I think. Uh, rise of Carlton, man. So I just want to fire this question off the text. Uh, Carlton, their first pick around 25. I was actually thinking this last night, who could be in that range. Maybe it might be like a Sam Butler or a Zach Taylor, one of these forward half players. They they did have a look around at a couple during the trade period and didn't really identify anyone. Right. So I'd look at those two names if they're still there. At that stage, a key though, forward type player? No, smaller type. Smaller, so Sam okay. Butler and, and Zach Taylor are both smaller players that can provide a bit of pressure forward. Neither of them are that quick, but they're smart, tough players in the forward line. Taj Wowoden, mm. famous name. Is, quick. Um, is he eligible for the son? He is, yeah. So, not, not to Collingwood. No, Melbourne got 100 games plus at Melbourne. Yep, right up. So what, what's the chances? Yeah, he goes there, I think. In the he second, goes to Melbourne? The second half of the draft. He's pushed himself into that draft range now where he deserves a shot in the national draft, in my view. Ran 2.89 seconds on the weekend in the 20-metre sprint. Mm. Outstanding character, they tell me. Yes. Uh, so I'm not sure if you, you know Shane no, or the kids too well. But, I don't know, Taj. Yeah. Um, I was caught up with Wowie over there. But they'd, be, they'd be thrilled over the moon if that was Yeah, and point. I think he's like obviously he's based in Perth, but keen to come to Melbourne. So our own teams, let's just put our own teams first. So Essendon, what are they going to do with the draft? Well... 
they don't come into it uh, until 11, which becomes 13. Mm. Once the, those two bids come in, oh look, there's, they're in a good spot, I think, to take a good player. I think they should be looking hard at Neil Erasmus as a taller midfielder, 188 centimeters from Western Australia, a competitor. Takes marks over here. He's not the the best kicker of the group, but he's an absolute beast around the ball. And you know, Tim, that that's a midfield that's got Parish, McGrath, Merritt. Mm. They need a little bit of bigger body help. We saw that probably in the elimination final. So he's one I should think they should look at. The other WA kid, I reckon they should be thinking about pretty hard is. Um, Jai Amos, who's a key forward. We haven't spoken about him. 196 centimetres. He's kicked 50-plus goals in the Colts competition this year. If he gets there, it's pretty hard to get a key forward. It, 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 the only way his club get really good key forwards are either buy him down the track or mm. get them top 10 picks or if they're father sons and get lucky enough there. So if he's there on the board, I think he's the guy that you have to take. You know, the, the key forward space at the Bombers is probably still a work in progress. Uh, he would be one that I'd be looking at. Demons, well, they got themselves into seven, 17? 17, yeah. They're in a little bit of a wait and see at that point. I, I think the names that you know, could be around that mark is, is Sam Butler that we spoke about before. Riley, uh, the younger brother of Dan Butler, he's, he's a really good player and probably a more complete player than Dan at the same age. Uh, is Zach Taylor, is he at that point? Look, I, I, I like that position of the draft. I actually think that we're saying before off air, it's the, the eye of the beholder second part of the first round. There's some real names that will pop up, I think. And quickly, and then we'll get the uh, quiz to find out whether you just got anything before 2000. <laughs> Richmond and Gold Coast, I uh, want to know, is there, is there a deal being done there, Richmond, trying to get to the fourth pick of the Gold Coast Suns? Yeah, well, Gold Coast uh, have been open to moving, but they don't have the need to get any extra picks in for this year because they've only got the list spots available for one new spot. So they're at pick three. Gold Coast have, uh, Richmond have pick seven and pick 15 and a stack of picks in the 20s. Richmond are definitely trying to get up if they can and package up, whether it's with the Crows at pick four, uh, the Suns at pick three or the Giants at pick two. That's a bit of a watch this space closer to the draft. Oh, I love it.